Okay, hello, welcome to this final video. We're going to run this simulation, so I hope the follow the previous video, you have your mesh. So at this point, you should have something like this. Beautiful mesh, okay, and also you can access its angulation. So starting from this, we're going to set up boundary conditions, the case, physics, and everything, probably the easiest part, well, after we have all the patches, the names. So let's explore our directory structure. So remember that always in Cedo you put initial boundary conditions. So here we have this folder that we, we, we created. Remember when the CD or the means original is kind of a backup. So before running, you need to move this one to the Cedo folder. So it's, this is something that we, we like to do just to keep keep backup of files. Sometimes can happen that or we write modify something. So we don't want to lose that information. So we do like this. Now in Cedo we have the files and we're ready to, to set up those conditions. So Everything has been already preset up. So as we look here, remember we have the velocity u, the dimensions, initial conditions, everything initialized zero. And then you set your value. So at the outlet we want zero gradient that is extrapolate the values. And here I don't use the inlet outlet because we know that the flow will go out. So there is no need to do that one, but it's one you, you, you can set that condition. And then the both inlet we set up this boundary conditions, okay, these are the velocities, and then the pi as CD is a wall, okay, the velocity is zero, zero, zero. And remember that as you go to constant poly mesh, and this is important that walls need to be defined walls here. You can use patch as well, but when you use tolerance models, if you put here patch, you will get, it won't run the simulation, you will get an error, I think, I don't recall. So you saw the walls, actual walls, put here walls, this will enable the use of one of wall function. So now there are models for heat transfer and radiation and stuff. And then uh, remember the others are patch that can be Newman, Diddy slash or uh, combine you know, Newman plus Diddy slash, okay, which is a Cauchy uh, boundary condition. And okay, we go and you were okay then and p pretty much the same remember that we're we're going to use uh incompressible solver the famous or infamous let's say ica foundation which is a very basic solver i don't recommend you to use this one because it's very basic you know you don't have to models you don't have have access to transfer uh to transfer properties all you know, the the ton of models and stuff like that so it's very basic, but we can get it wrong very fast. So we're going to use this one. So remember, it's always it's the pressure is relative, but also is pressure divided density. Okay, this does not correspond to the actual Pascal units. And then the outlet. Remember to it's a good idea to fix the pressure now. Do not put everything zero 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 gradient because you will get at any ill ill conditioned system. So fix pressure at the outlet or somewhere. And then inlet two walls is the usual zero gradient. And then we keep reading the other dictionaries. So we go to transfer properties here. We just define new. Okay. So we are using dimensional. It's getting a dimensional uh, similarity, so I'm assuming here that my density is one, and then I would reach a uh, Reynolds number. So I don't recall, probably, I think it's 800 or 600. Any case, it's up to you. Uh, and then we open the proper physics. So here you open Ctrl D, SV Skin, and SV Solutions. So remember that in SV Skin, we set all our numeric so this will be a low Reynolds number since I'm moving really slow so we're going to set a uh, basic a uh, basic uh, numeric so it's time dependent we use over there then this is the way we compute gradient schemes okay remember here we're using gradient limiters and for P we're using this so P here with split that will be smooth so we want high accuracy there then for the convective tab, we apply this one. Okay, Gauss linear wind, which is second order accurate. And then as this is a good mesh, we just keep limited one. Okay, it's a corrected skin. We go for SV solution here. We need to set the linear solver for each of the equation that we want to save. So here we have P, P final. So we are creating them for U as well using this method and the number of corrector for the P, so the pressure velocity coupling. Usually, Two for the number of correctors is a good choice. 
okay, you get very good approximations and then according to the mesh quality you can increase this one here I use in a rather high value but it's, this is an inexpensive simulation and then you go to the control dictionary and remember here you set up runtime parameters such as time time state and time writing interval stuff like that okay so basically here we have this time set that this is a rather, rather high time set will give me about CFL could a number of four or five I don't recall well but in this case it will be the simulation will be stable but remember you can change everything while it's running and then we have the function objects uh, this is a standard for us we also we always like to compute a minimum and maximum just to show is the values are keeping bounded but remember you can add, add more of that so for instance in this case we know that the method is fully conservative so what is going in is going out so we can add a function object to compute the mass flow so usually as you see I don't recall that so what you do is you go to a tutorial that you know that already you have that something work and just copy and paste that so I'm going here to this specific tutorial that I know that I have that function object and I would just will copy that information and paste that in here so here I have it Okay, I will put it here. So I see that I will compute mass flow one. Remember, we have two. We have the saving frequency, and then I want to compute it in what part? In inlet one. Okay, in field. Remember, it is the flux across that phase. Let me replicate this one to the other patch. Okay, it is enabled true, so change the name, that is extremely important as well, do not use the same name, change the patch there, and, let two. and then we do the same for the outlet, so I will call it three, you can call it also outlet, and here put the name of the patch, it is outlet, I'm pretty much I'm ready to go, I have that function object set up, and nothing else to check so I would run using icofun remember you can run in parallel uh, let me run in parallel by the way so I think also I have the dictionary here already set up uh, let me go back to the case uh, the compose balls yes I have four there so we type decompose part with the compose everything into four processors and now we can run in parallel so mpi mpi run minus mp4 i confirm minus parallel okay and i would like to use safety log file this is extremely important always safety log file i can send the simulation and if everything's okay we'll be running voila so i see that we're computing the mass flow here as you do the respective algebra you will see that what is going in is going out but also we can plot that information okay and see that this cfl yeah is something about five okay so we'll see that this is stable simulation is not giving problem that we can plot those residuals of that i like to plot those residuals using uh a python okay you can use some other utility but a Python for this case was really good. Now we use Python blood washer, okay? And I will plot whatever it is there in that file, in the log file I inside them. And here we have our continuity errors, and then we have our residuals. Okay, let me. So remember, the continuity error can be positive or negative, but they need to be a small value. So in, in a steady case, you will expect a slow value, some uh, low value, something like this, probably even lower. For a steady simulation, sometimes it's difficult to, to force conservation, and, and maybe you will get something higher. But in general, as you start to see something in the order to 10 to the minus 3 or 2, it's something that's not, it's not going well. Okay, it's better check boundary conditions, pneumatics, what is going on. And here you we see the residuals that they are falling in a monolithic way, so this kind of indication that this is in fact uh, uh, 
steady solution. Who knows? Probably some, some, some one point there will be the set of instability. I know that in this case we don't have that one. But when you see this kind of behavior, it's clear indication that you have a, a, a steady behavior. As you see, then one point this receiver start to go up. That is indication indication that somewhere there is an unsteadiness, or maybe the solution is diverging due to something that you need to check. Okay, so let's wait a little bit. I think it was set up for five seconds. I will stop. Uh, let's. I will stop the simulation at two seconds. So remember that you can change everything while you are running. So we go two seconds there, and probably see what you can. If you are not happy with this CFL, you can reduce your time set to get something lower. So let's run in up to two, two seconds, and let's see what we have to do some some post processing. Okay, the simulation is over my side. So look at here that run the two seconds. Since you check the continuity, you will see that pretty much is conserving something very close to zero. And here we have our residual, but what I was mentioned, they are falling in a mon mon monolithic way, meaning that probably this is a very steady simulation. Okay, and you continue to say we're very low. So let's close this a little bit. And now let's do some post-processing. So we run the case in parallel. So remember, you can reconstruct everything using the reconstruct part, which if you have large measures, large large cases can be time-consuming, or you can use Pada phone with the action built in, and you will be able to post-process everything in parallel. So I will use this action just to save a few seconds or minutes. And to post process the, the compose case, you, you will need to select here the compose case. Okay, apply it, and now we can access that, that information. Okay, in the folders, processors, one, two, three, whatever. So, and remember that you have the time information, you rescale everything, and here is our solution pressure velocity. Suspect that the walls is zero because we set that condition. And um, we have our solution, and then to visualize, we can apply here on a size and um, normal to sit. I can rescale, I can hide that plane. This is the pressure there, and then we can also have the velocity, and we can play a little animation. Okay, so this is centered at a higher velocity, so this is centered at 2, 1, and see how they are mixing. Okay, kind of, we see that it have a steady behavior. So pretty much this is an easy simulation just to test with the everything from scratch, geometry, mesh, setup condition, but since can be a little bit more, more complicated. So in our next video, the final one, we're going to do some modifications here. So for instance, we are going to set up a paraboloid profile here and here, okay? So here, so far, it's uniform, so maybe it will be more realistic to set up a paraboloid here and here. So we're going to show you how to do code the string to, to program boundary conditions directly in the dictionaries. In any case, also, you can set up a pressure boundary condition. So maybe we do paraboloid here and pressure here. So the pressure will let the pressure, the velocity profile evolve in a natural way. And also, we're going to add a passive scatter here. Okay, so again, we're going to use uh, function objects to add the, the scatter here. So pretty much there is no need to program. So previous version, old version, you know, if you want to add passive scatter, you need to add it down the solver. So now you have that pluggable solver that will do the, the work very well. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, well, that was everything for this case. And hope to see you in the next video. Bye.